I'm Brian Hayes, and today we're going to talk about loops, specifically loops within Salesforce Flow. Loops is a functionality within Salesforce Flow, which is very, very useful, but it's a point of confusion for pretty much anybody that's learning Flow for the first time, unless they've got programming background. When I was first learning how to use Flow, it really confused me. It took me a while to get it. Uh, and that's been the case with you know, any colleague I've worked with, as well with any of our customers. So hopefully this explanation and example will help you make a little bit of sense of loops. If you don't get it initially, don't fret too much about that. It's kind of a tricky concept and you need to work with it a little bit before you get it. So a loop allows you to iterate over multiple records of the same type. Now it's also possible to use a loop to iterate over uh, variables, not just records, but let's leave that to the side for now. So let's take a, a use case and we'll build this out together. Let's say, for example, you've got an opportunity and that opportunity has line items on it. And whenever this opportunity is marked as closed one, you want to create tasks for the opportunity owner automatically. You could think of this, maybe you have different products and services. And whenever that product or service gets sold, somebody needs to register or they need to contact the person in the department that's in control of that service or, or that product. So a task needs to be made. Well, if you don't have the ability to create loops, you could do that in flow, but you'd have to create a get and a create record and probably a lot of decisions in there too. And we get really complicated really fast because you don't know how many products that person attached to that opportunity. That's the key. Maybe there's just one product on that opportunity. So you only need to create one task, but there could also be 30 products on that opportunity. And now you need to create 30 tasks. And let's say that the tasks have different subject lines, depending on what the product is. Maybe what we want to do is have the subject line actually have the name of the product in it. Well, without a loop and without knowing exactly how many products are going to be related to that opportunity, you're going to have a very complicated flow here that's going to have some sort of limit. You know, you're not going to be able to build out the logic for every possible combination of products attached to the opportunity. That's where loops come in handy. Because with loops, you can work with a collection of records. And a collection of records is just more than one of that record. So instead of dealing with each product individually, we can say, get me all the products related to this opportunity. And now let's do something with them. Let's loop through each one. And for each one, let's take some action, like create a task. So let's walk through that here. So the first thing we need is a collection. So I'm going to add a new step here to get records. And let's say we're going to get the opportunity product records. So the object we want are opportunity products and opportunity products. Those are just line items on the opportunity. And we want all of them where their opportunity ID is equal to the opportunity that started our record triggered flow here. So the step that I, I didn't include in this video was just creating this flow record triggered that's triggered on an opportunity when it's closed one. And now right here, this is important. We can either just get the first record that meets this criteria, or we can get all records. If you get all records, that's going to create a collection variable automatically. Now that we have a collection, we can add this loop step here, and we're going to loop through those products. We've got a collection variable that we need to select. Here it is opportunity products from our get opportunity product step. And you could choose to go from the first item to the last item or last item to the first item. It doesn't really matter. Hit done. And now here is our loop. And this is going to go in a clockwise fashion and we can add steps to it. And it's going to take each one of those products, but one at a time. And so what we could do, and now typically you don't want to do this, but let me just do this as a demonstration, is we could create a task here. And we're just going to create one task and we're going to use separate resources and literal values the object here. Let me select task. And now what we could do is take the subject of that task. And we could say that we want the subject to be the name of that opportunity product or that line item. So if you scroll down, we have this new record variable here, which says current item from loop. So because we're looping through, we're going one at a time through those line items, we actually have this temporary variable that we can select and use within our loop. This is the product that we're on currently. So let me select that and let's look at the name. Select the name and we'll just set the subject to the name for now. 
And then we could add all the other field values, which I'll just skip for now and hit done. So what this is going to do is loop through each product. And for each product, it will create another task. And then once it's done with the two products or the 10 products or however many there were, it'll then finish and it will end. So this is a good explanation of how loops work, but you don't ever want to actually build a loop this way just because this is a database action and we don't want to have any database actions inside of our loop. We'll hit limits quickly. It's very inefficient. So there's a better method for doing this. But the point is a loop takes a collection where we have multiple records in it and it's going to go through them one at a time. And then for each one of those, we can take some other sort of action. We can assign variables, we can do calculations, et cetera. And then once it's finished going through however many products there were, however many records there were, it's then going to finish and move on to other steps in the flow. Now, if you'd like to learn how to do this the right way and create a bunch of records based on a collection of records using a loop, take a look at the video we have linked here. It's from our automation of the week series. It'll show you how to take products from an opportunity and create assets for them automatically. Now, if you really want to learn Salesforce quickly, take a look at our courses at academy.rotive.io. Thanks for watching.